Father, we thank you. We are grateful to you. Indeed, we are the all sufficient God. We give you praise. And I praise. love that song so much by Oni Felix that I didn't want it to stop, but then <laughs> we must continue. To Him alone be all the glory. The God that is awesome. The God that is wonderful, marvelous. Thank you, precious God. The adjectives are inadequate to describe who He is. But we are here to say, Daddy, thank you. We are here to worship, to magnify you, to adore you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We can only keep saying thank you. <laughs> On behalf of our nation, Nigeria, and the nations of the world, we say thank you. We say thank you for your sustenance. We say thank you for doing that which only you can do. Thank you for Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, thank you for coordination. For us, even when we are not fit to serve you. Thank you for coordination. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have so prayed. Amen. You are welcome to Church on the Air, Jordan 93.9 FM. My voice and your voice, the voice of the people, and the very, very special voice of God. Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Mrs. Edith Atake. A pleasant afternoon to you. God bless you. Amen. We have been on relationships. We started a new series and we are looking at friendships. And so far it has been warning. We have said, watch the friends you keep. Watch that associate. Watch your acquaintance, your companion, your confidant, your chum chum, your classmate, your colleague. Watch your schoolmate, your soulmate, your well-wisher, your cousin, whosoever. We've said to you that the best friend to have is Jesus. The best friend to have is Jesus. Only him can help you without asking for anything in turn. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Hymn number 327 of the sacred songs and solos describes for us in detail what Christ does for you and for me as a friend. So we'd always say to you, for everything, the starting point is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You want to excel in life, you want to make it in life, you want a friend, whatsoever it is that you're looking for, we are here to say to you that the best friend to have is Jesus. And him, number 327, talking about the friendship of Jesus. That's was that Jesus is the best friend we can ever, ever have. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. A privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. He says, have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who oh, will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. It asks, it says, are we weak and heavy landing? Do you have such a load, so much load to bear? 
that you feel you need a friend, you need someone to talk to, you need someone to show you the way, you need someone to show you how to make it in life, have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. He said, Jesus is still our ever sure refuge. He said, do thy friends despise for day. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find our soul is there. In Christ Jesus, there is joy, there is peace. There is all that you can ever, ever want. And in just talking to him in prayer, just, just talk. Some people complicate the issue of prayer. No, prayer is not complicated. <laughs> prayer is just talking with God, just talking to God. As you talk to your friend, tell him. Somebody offend him, tell him whatsoever. Tell him. And then just keep quiet. He will speak back to you. But the problem is a lot of us, we go to the Lord and we rush out without allowing him to talk to us. You must allow him to talk to you. He is waiting. So the qu next question now will be that, is it that we shouldn't have a friend in the world? No, 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 no. We didn't say so. All we just said is that let your antenna be up with spoke on drug trafficking and giving you examples of how a lot of girls are lured into it and now even boys because of the issue of same-sex homosexuality and all that so they are also trafficking boys and girls and also for vital organs so we said be careful a friend is very is very very important so some of you that say i want to be alone i will stay on my own no 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 don't do that. That is not what we are saying. What we are just saying is be careful. Be careful. And we'll show you how to make godly friends, how to be able to come out on tops, you know, with good relationships. So friends are good. Friends are good, but you have to be careful. A friend is a confidant. Somebody you can talk to is a companion. An acquaintance, a compatriot, a, co a comrade, people you are familiar with, a partner, a playmate, a roommate, a schoolmate. So they are very, very good. And what does the Bible say about friendship? Apart from the warning, the Bible has a lot of things to say about friendship. To have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior is the starting point. Because when you have Jesus, he will now direct you and control you and show you. Your antenna will be high and he will tell you how to have good relationships. To have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, all you need to do is to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. forgive me my sin, have mercy on me. Once you say that, you are born again. Get a Bible. Get a daily devotion and study the word. And in that attitude of study, of prayerfulness, ask God to show you your church. You need a Bible-believing church where you find a family. And then when you go there, you see a family that will help you, encourage you. Because like a child, you must learn. So it is in the church setting that you'll be able to learn. So don't say COVID-19, I won't go to church today. No, don't allow the church doors to be closed. Our half-brothers, no matter what, even during the COVID-19, you could see them trooping out, trooping out to go and pray. So don't stop. Don't let COVID-19 stop you. Because it, the relationship that will last forever and ever and ever and ever, that does not have an end, is that relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, and when you do that, you'll find out that it will be very, very, very good for you. It will be okay for you. So, Proverbs 27, 9. Have your paper and bio. Proverbs 27, 9 says that ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So does the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. If you have a good friend, the Bible 
likens it to ointment and perfume that is pleasant, that is sweet, that is refreshing. So you see that friendship is good. But the point is, we'll come to that. What kind of friendship do you have? You understand? Then Proverbs 13, 20. Proverbs 13, 20 says that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Mm -hmm. So if you are working with wise people, he says that you'll be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So those other categories of people that have been deceived, their destinies derailed by bad friends, mm -hmm. they have their destinies destroyed. And the Bible here says that if you are working with friends, people who don't add value, the word is value, people who don't add value to your relationship, mm -hmm. to your destiny, to your life, are you a married woman and you are working with people who are not encouraging you to stay in your marriage, to make it work? They are not showing you how to get about the challenges that fa face you. You are in the wrong company. If you are ready, they tell you, they say, I beg, you can make it. Who needs a man now? Look at baby mama. Look at this. Look at that. The same thing with the man. Forgetting that the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, that two is better than one because they will have a good reward for their companionship. So please, friendships are very, very important. You need to pray. There is no man that has ever made it alone. No. I see some youth, after they've made it, they begin to, to look down on their parents and things. They say, I made myself. I did this. I did that. How could you have made yourself? You hear people say that I'm a self-made man. <laughs> uh, I just laugh. I just woman. laugh. Some women will say I'm a self-made woman. It's Some men will say I'm a self-made man. Error. What did you contribute? What did you do? Error. <laughs> gross <laughs> error. <laughs> Working in gross error. Gross error. What did you contribute? What did you do? What did you do this? What did you do that? And some of you, by such reasoning, limit yourself. Because the wife, the man that has stayed and suffered with you, you just wake up all of a sudden. Say, you won't eat my money. You want this, you want that. You are not good enough. You are not this, you are not that. God hates all such kind of thoughts. He hates it. So, but if you walk in the ways of good men, Proverbs 2.20, he said, they will keep your path. Good men, you know. <laughs> the person that is bad, you know. The one that is good, you know. Definitely, you know. You know. So fruits. Psalm 11963, Psalm 11963 is encouraging us and enjoining us to be a companion of them that fear God. You see, we started with God. We said the first thing you need is God in your life. When you have God in your life, with that you will not be able to know godly relationships. But if you don't know God, you don't have God in your agenda, you just wake up, you can't say thank you, Jesus. You can't say, God, I thank you. You don't have anything to look up to, to say, ah, God helped me. God sustained me. God did this for me. Then you're on your own. It means you are full of yourself. And you can't go far that way. So, Psalm 119, 63. Check our YouTube account under the banner of love. You see, we made a lot of, lots of clips on the word of God. Just Psalm 119. Penned by one youth, one young man, David. Is the best classic, is a poem. Somebody wrote volumes, volumes of book on Psalm 119 alone. Check our YouTube account under the banner of love. You see there. Download. When you, you they will give you free browsing in the night. Use it. Download them. When you download them, when you are playing it, it won't count on you again. It will be free. I have so many that I downloaded like that. I, and I keep playing and playing and playing. So download the word, the word, the word. Above all, read your Bible. Read your Bible. He says here that Psalm 119, I am a companion of them that fear thee and of them that keep their precepts. So if you walk with godless men, you have problem. Our president, when they were launching the drug initiative some time back, said that one of Nigeria, that in fact, he said the number one problem for Nigeria was drugs, more than banditry, kidnapping, and all that. <laughs> when you hear that on face value, say, how come they are trying to make excuses for the security challenges we have? But if you look at it again, 
that statement is a statement of fact. Because I sat down when I first had it. I said, how can drugs be, be more than banditry and kidnapping? <laughs> how can the president said it was the number one issue? But as you begin to hear the news every day and you begin to see the gross, I add the word gross, not just mass inhumanity to man, but gross mass inhumanity to, in, in, inhumanity to man, wickedness. When it comes to such issues, <laughs> I become temperamental, emotional. Sometimes I cry. I'm not a crying person, but sometimes when I start to cry, I just be crying. I'm overwhelmed in my spirit with the level of wickedness. How somebody can be using a knife to do a lot of things on human body, draw map. How they can kill human beings, kill pregnant men, all that. But you see, some of these news, as you hear them, they are so dehumanizing. But of course, then the point is that nobody in his right sense will be doing that. And that is where now the president's uh, um, statements mm. come to play because they are high, mm. they are on drugs. Yes. So human beings don't mean anything anymore. Human beings are just mere objects of play, to be played with. You'll be groaning. I didn't see the clip, but somebody was talking of how somebody was, kidney was being removed live from somebody, and he was shouting, screaming, and they were videoing. But all these things is because those people, and they've lost their sanity. And on that drugs, there is nothing you cannot do. You talk to your parents anyhow, you do anyhow, you can begin to post some of those people that say, don't dress well. Don't go to school. Drop out of school. When I visited their pages, I was so, 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 so sad and overwhelmed within me. Come and see young, young girls videoing themselves and posting it by themselves. They tattoo themselves, do that, begin to post. It's not a normal thing now. So when you work with companions of fools, that's what the Bible says, so not me, Psalm 119, 63, say you become a fool. So they begin to tell you, do this, do that, post it, do this, do that. Go to Facebook with our shirt, do this. Do you know that now some of these things we post, we tell on you. A lot of you, you two go for visa, you don't know that they'll just check your profile. <laughs> Nowadays, they don't have time for long interview because they know that from youth, you like uh, internet, you like videoing and filming. So what they just do now for interview, they'll just go to your Facebook, they just type your name there. You don't know that they are checking your profile. They'll just type your name, pa, 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 and everything you are doing. All of you young boys and young girls that is posting rubbish, rubbish. Facebook, no, they delete or now lie. Then they tell you lie. When you delete her. <laughs> In fact, one was sincere with me. I posted, um, I don't like talking much. I use, um, on my Facebook account, I use, there's this clip for love, big with plenty love. I like that one, a few others. So there was a wording I posted. I didn't read it well, but... I discovered that that wording didn't suit the person I posted, you know, in saying thank you and all that. We use pictures and wordings. So I deleted it. A beautiful um, good morning um, um, greeting. <laughs> Facebook, we are now gracious. <laughs> Before they don't tell you so. They were now gracious to tell me that that thing that I deleted, that if the person reports it, they will bring it out and use it. <laughs> Can you, did you, do you understand what I said? Let me repeat. I deleted something from Facebook, a picture, a word picture, good morning something, but I just felt the wording didn't fit that occasion. So I deleted it. <laughs> then Facebook acknowledged the delete, but told me that if the person that I posted that thing to complains, they will bring it back <laughs> to show you that nothing is deleted, is there. It will just go, it will just come back again, come back again, come back again, come back again. Come back again. Like me, I don't like celebrating birthdays and all that. But the other day, Facebook by themselves, only them. They do that to you too. They will just pick your pictures, formulate, formulate for you. Sing a happy birthday for you, post it for you. <laughs> so a lot of these things that you think you have deleted, they didn't delete. So in your youth, in your vibrancy, be very, very careful. Knowing that some of these things you do will come back to hurt you. Come back to haunt you. Like me, I have a lot of friends for Facebook. Initially, I had up to 5,000. They said um, I had reached the peak, so I couldn't add more. But I began to delete. How was I deleting? I just check your profile. See, what, what did you post? Or you enter my Facebook page, and you are posting rubbish, nonsense. Me, I know they talk anything. I'll just click your face. 
go to your page, quietly defriend you. So your page, what you post, what you do, we tell a lot. So be very, very careful. So all those friends, you are doing party, you begin to smoke, you begin to post, you begin to this. Number one, you are destroying your destiny. Number two, it will talk against you in the future. Leave them alone. Some girls now are not getting husband. No. Let me give you expo. You will not guess where they do post rubbish. You hear them say, ah, you know, see in Facebook accounts, you know, see what you do, you know, see how they do, you know, see how they do, you know, see what they do. So be very, very, very careful. Careful. But we are saying that friendship is very, very good. Job 6 14. Compassion. Job had a problem. And when his friends came, the Bible says that for seven days, they just sat quietly with him. That is companionship. They came to show understanding with him. You see, Job 6, 14, he says, to him that is afflicted, he said, pity should be showed from his friend. <laughs> I believe maybe that one was when they were now beginning to, friends that did well, when they started, they were quiet. They came to commiserate with Job and they just sat quietly. After, come and see the words that we are coming out from the friends, people that say they were friends of Job. Some of you are into a lot of party, uh, what do they call it? Um, a lot of uh, family meetings. And that's where a lot of you women are getting broke. Because this rapper you go buy, that rapper you go buy, you go contribute for this, you go contribute for that, you go go for this. I have heard of these people now that you are doing meeting with, they are supposed to be your friends, your best friends. And if you go for party, they are supposed to be the ones to say, please feed others first. But I've seen with my two eyes where they were the ones who were now rebelling. You brought us all the way. To, see the kind of food you, you are giving us. See the this, see the that. Disgrace. Disgracing the person that they escorted for burial. Can you imagine that? Another one. They poured sand. Friends, so the club people. Club, club people that are their friends. Pack the sand and pour it inside the cooler of food she gave them. Is that the right place? Why don't you wait when you go back home to your meeting place? You now find the person, or you say, ah, or even that person say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't entertain you enough. Please forgive me, and they'll do for you. Then attend to the people that have come, the visitors. You now are not supposed to be a visitor, but they'll be disgracing you. So, compassion. So, when you are looking for friendship, look for compassion. Who is showing you kindness? Who is nice to you? A lot of issues. You must have won somebody. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. When it backfire, are they now mocking you? Say, be I told you. I told you don't do it. Or did they tell you, well, it's past. How can we do? What's the solution for it? How can we remedy this? Those are the kind of friends you should have. So we are saying that friendship is important. And we, show you, we are showing you now what you should look for. Proverbs 17.9. So Proverbs 17.9 says, Forgiveness. Your friends, will they forgive you? Husband and wife, do you forgive? You walk in gross error if you are married for 20 years, 30 years, and then the thing that happened 30 years ago, you are, you are talking about it now. To show that all these years, you were in that relationship without a clean heart. The thing that happened 25 years, you are still talking about it. The thing that happened, ah, uh ah, -uh, ah, 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 You must let go. So if you have friends, Proverbs 17, 9 says, He that covered a transgression, seeked love. You offended your friends. Maybe you had an appointment and they disappointed. Or they have an occasion, you couldn't go. Some will hold it against others. So, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't make it. No, no problem, no problem. And there are a lot of parties now. A lot of occasions will celebrate together. Or do they hold it against you? So the people that show you forgiveness are the people you should work with. Those who genuinely forgive you, they say, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Let's move on, let's move on, let's move on. There are greater, better days ahead. He said, but he that repeated a matter, he says, separated very friends, husband and wife, you the wife, you are repeating, 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 repeating. Not the things that just happened. You keep repeating them. It means that you are looking for separation. You don't want the good of that home. And like they will always say, <laughs> if you don't try to wife, you won't know. But... Bible does not allow that. But what you are trying to say here is that where you have good relationships, cherish them. Cherish them. 
Bible says, cherish the wife of your youth. Cherish the husband of your youth. Now that I begin to look down on the person, begin to bring issues that have passed since 1900. No. Proverbs 17, 17, supportiveness. Are they supportive? Are they strength in difficult times? Job friends, I give you a reading assignment. On my own as a student, as a teenager, I read Job. I wanted to find out what caught my attention. Me, I'm not born again when I'm reading all this Bible. The Bible I knew, I didn't know them as born again. I, I, was, I was brought up in a godly home. Yes, that my, my family, my mother, by the special grace of God, has eight pastors, same parents, in a family of ten. Now, eight. Nine is the family pastor. <laughs> that one no give take any post anyway. Even for their child, they give her the keys. They know they do. <laughs> but she's a family pastor. She's one coordinating. You know, when you want wisdom and all, Sister Mary, she's there for you. <laughs> so in a platform, we've long ago ordained her as pastor. <laughs> Even this week now, we'll be celebrating our mom's um, uh, third year anniversary. So they say, Pastor Mary, do, do, do. They say, me, you know, I miss pastors, but now have our pastor. So, what happens here? Job's friends, they came, but they were not supportive. I was curious. Job once said, there is a man. He praised the man, how wealthy the man was. And then God began to make a young guy with Job. He asked Satan, he said, have you seen my servant Job that there is none like him? It was God that was making young guy with Job in Job 1. Job 1. So, May God make younger with you and me in Jesus' name. Amen. So I began to read. What made Job tick? What made Job a friend of God? What made Job to be somebody that God is, you know, vouching for? And that was when I began to see that his friends, even though they came to support him, we are not at all at all supportive. Let me read Job 1. Job 1 says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And the man was perfect and upright. Job 1. Perfect and upright. And the one that loved God and eschewed evil. And then Job began to... His daughters were mentioned how beautiful they are. How everything, you know. Read, I give you a reading assignment. You know, yeah, last week we told you, so we they do on us and they do us for... Uh, Newspaper review. They won't tell you everything. We say we're not going to tell you everything. Go and read your Bible. Me, I, I read Job as a, as a student. You take your book and go and read Job. What made Job tick? What made God to begin to make Nyanga with Job? You see it. His substance is this, is this. I won't talk much. Go and read it. He had seven sons, seven beautiful daughters. And the Lord said unto Satan, Job 1, 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man? So it is possible to be perfect. It is possible to be upright. Our nation, Nigeria, now is in need of men and women, statesmen that will rise up and turn the tide around. We profess to be majority in the land, but when they want to talk of corruption, now we be number one. This now we be number one. That now we be number one. While our half brothers use their own to be propagating the gospel, a lot of us are just using it. 90 houses in Dubai. This, that, 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 that. Only you. No. Let's change. Let's use our monies for kingdom advancement to help the privileged, the poor, to build the society. And Satan answered Job and said, Is it for nothing? Go and read by yourself. Job, see what it can happen. How they can they tempt Satan? How Satan can they tempt Job one by one? But in all, Job did not sin. Satan was trying him, trying him, but he held on. As many of you that are out there that have made friendship with Jesus, but you find that things are not okay, things are not well. Our mother in the Lord, Love Emmanuel, had a program this um, week, God's General, and we were privileged to be a part of it. I took some classes in the School of Ministry. 
just this morning, the senior pastor was not interested in the award initially. He said, Mommy, we want to give award. He said, but Mommy, Mommy, <laughs> now we go give Mommy love award. Not be Mommy love go give us a award. Because if there's anyone that needs award, it's Mommy love. She has shown exemplary character of what it means to be a general. Indeed, she's a general. And she's the one that should be given an award. I remember that some years back, I felt like this when she was giving several awards. And God said, give her an award. I came out, what will I give her? Because I was just giving people, giving people award. I said, this woman, I need an award. God said, she's the one. What is the award? Final, final. Do you know what God asked me to give to her? A plain sheet of paper. That was several years ago. I don't know if she remembers. Several years ago. Then she just started God's general. She said, wrap the paper. I wrap the plain sheet of paper. Then when I wrap the plain sheet of paper, I put it in, a, in, a, in those kind of award things that they give. Then our mommy Kwe was the one who gave it to her because mommy Kwe was around that day. And what did we say to her? The world is open for you. The world is waiting to hear you. Inside it is a plain sheet of paper. But go and write and write and write and write and write. And over the years, it's a great privilege to see that indeed she has left an indelible footprint in the sands of time with her own on ending love for humanity and she gave my husband an award and today my husband was in the church was say that what touched him with the award was what she wrote on it what did she write me i didn't i've not picked the award to look at it because i've been so busy but it just happened that day for a city also but it was from him and i had that the award was service for serving god in in all seasons, there's a way she put it. That means in good times and in bad times, we were still there for God. Because when we speak to you like this, we have had our own share of trials. Plenty trials, but we've said to God, <laughs> no, 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 no. I will never go back anymore. No, 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 no. I will never go back anymore. In our trials, me, I said to Satan, you came too late. Too late. There's no going back. No going back. So whatever he does, it's Odeshi, water on this feed. I move on. <laughs> I move on. And I'm happy when I hear statements like, my senior pastor say, you, you will eat or you don't have money for food. <laughs> you don't have money for this. You don't have money for, but ministry, when it comes to ministry, <laughs> <laughs> you get money. I am happy. <laughs> I I didn't hear you have money for making your hair, making your fingernail, uh, make chopping meat pie, chopping Mr. Big Shawama. For ministry, very good. I'm on the right track. <laughs> we press on. Amen. So are you out there? You have made friendship with Jesus, but it's not working well. Press on. Mm -hmm. We are pressing on down upward way. New heights we are giving in every day. Still praying as we are upward bound. Our prayer, our aim is higher ground. Lord, lift us up and let us stand by faith on heaven's stable land. I have played than we have found. Lord, plant our feet on high ground. It is forward ever and backward never. So nothing. That would also say people like us, nothing can do. <laughs> there were times when we were building them. In <laughs> fact, I won't even know that I've walked to 10 o'clock. <laughs> I won't know. And when it's Bible study time, that's how, it's when I get there, I look at my hands, look at, I say, yeah. <laughs> Devil knows. <laughs> even in those days when we first got married, even if I'm not well, Senior Pastor will be looking at me. And to the glory of God, no hospital, nothing, nothing. It was only when I turned 50, my family insisted I should go for tests. What is the secret? I can be very, very sick lying down. But when it is time, he, he now hear the Senior Pastor saying, hey, you've been lying down since, so. But now that it's time for church, you are standing up. You are getting up. <laughs> I have no answer. <laughs> Yeah, but the secret is I can never go and come back the same. No way. Mm. <laughs> Dr. Jesus will touch me yeah, exactly. and I will be well and I'll be strong and I'll be okay and I'll be good. Ready to fly through the troop again. 
So, are you there? You know Jesus, but trials and temptation. Hold on. Don't mind this new generation people that tell you that when you are facing trials, something's wrong with you. Now lie. Nothing, nothing they do you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself said in John 16, 33, he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My peace I give to you, not as the world give it. In this world, you have trials, tribulation, problems. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome, overcome the world. The studio lines to call 70 5086-3939. Questions, comments, contribution on this topic or on any other topic is welcome. Another studio line to call 90 1842 This topic on friendship, we're on a relation, relationship series. And today we are saying that friendships are important. Well, we are warning you, please don't do away with friends. But we are saying look for godly friends. Look for people that are compassionate, that feel with you, that bear your pain. People that forgive your shortcomings and encourage you to press on. People that are supportive of your cause. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello? Hello? He Hello? Good afternoon, church on the air. Afternoon. I can hear you. A very pleasant afternoon to you. Afternoon. Hello? Oh my God. Sorry, we could hear you, but you can't hear us. Hello? 070. Yes. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Happy good to hear from you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Happy to hear from you, Daddy Godwin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God, he can never disappoint you. Yes, sir. Your father will disappoint you. Your mother, your relation will disappoint you. Yes, sir. When you trust in the Lord, he can never disappoint you. Yes, sir. And again, the chance of parents, the chance of children, uh, or the youth, your children move with you. Yes, sir. You know, change their life. And the parents have to know the type of friends, friends they are children move with. Yes, sir. And another thing is uh, this mode of dressing. Yes, sir. No wife, no husband. Yes, sir. If you dress badly, you expose your bed. How can somebody, uh, somebody come to you to say you have your hand in marriage? Yes, sir. You dress differently and you respect yourself, people will respect you. Yes, sir. Another thing, this tattoo in, in Ghana and even in Ghana, when they were putting, this, they were asking to wear fancy. You know, you will wear butter. You expose yourself. If you tattoo, they will never enlist you. Yes, sir. For <laughs> yes, sir. And you have to let them enter their head. Yes, sir. And forgiveness. All of us have to go to the Lord's prayer. Yes, sir. Oh, Father, forgive me my trespassing. I have forgiven those people that trespass against me. Are you sure you are forgiving somebody to do something? You put it down on your diary. <laughs> the moment you remember you write the story, you will never forget. Yes, sir. In totality, you have to forgive. Yes, sir. Thank you. Once again, Mr. Godwin of Wally. Thank you God very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The studio lines to call 70 
Hello, good afternoon, church on the air. Your radio. Your radio. Hello, we can hear you. Oh, my God. Please, when you are calling us, move away from your radio. We could hear you, but there was an interference from your radio. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Wow. We are honored. We are honored. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's well with you. Is well with you. Whatever is your area of need, as many that are out there listening to us, God will meet you all at the point of your needs. In Jesus name. We don't have time on radio to pray for you, but rest assured, immediately we close, we do withdraw for an hour, an hour and a half to pray for you. Jordan 93.9 FM has a prayer room. We will sit there and we pray for you. And above all, know that Jesus himself is interceding for you and it is well with you. We shall all end well in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will meet us all at the point of our needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No weeping, no lamentation, no sorrowing. Evil reports will not near our camp in the name of Jesus. Amen. We celebrate you all. Our first caller, Daddy Godwin, said that we thank God for what God was doing in our maze at Jordan 93 and um, in Nigeria as a whole. Thank you, Daddy Godwin. And he said, parents had a duty. He said, parents, please check your youth. Check your young ones. Hello, good afternoon. Church on the air. Good afternoon, ma'am. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Oh, thank you. More grace, more grace. I feel like sharing this when I'm hearing this message this afternoon. Wow, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much for calling. Father, we pray for the sister that has left home as a point of contact for as many that leave at rebuke. We ask the Lord God that you bring them back home again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord, we speak Jesus. your peace to the hearts of our youth. I will come against every spirit of restlessness. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we say, speak to them yourself. Calm them down yourself. Mm -hmm. Using that sister's, um, sister as a point of contact. It is well with our youth. Amen. We will not cry over them. Amen. We will not lose them. We didn't burn them for Satan. Jesus. Therefore, Satan cannot control our teenagers and our youth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we say, thank you. Thank you so, Daddy Godwin said, parents, please watch your children. That from youth, check them. Watch their friends. Watch their friends. But some of you don't even allow them to bring them home. And once you don't allow them to bring them home, you can't know what they are doing. So allow them to bring them home, see what they are doing, and then cancel. And then it's not all the time you talk with prayer. We have done uh, a, a series already on teenagers and youth. But this is a gentle reminder to see, please, parents, Daddy uh, Godwin from Kuali saying, be interested 
in the friends of your children. Then daddy, Kuali, uh, daddy Godwin, <laughs> my time is up and I'm beginning to rush. I begin to make mistakes. But we must comment on the issue of tattoo and dressing. Daddy Godwin is warning youth that please, as friends are calling you to come and go and do this, go and do this, say be very, very careful. He said now a lot of youths are not entering the forces and a lot of very sensitive um, um, uh, places because of the tattoos and their method of dressing. Mm -hmm. Adding to what I said about postings on Facebook, that you should be careful what you post, that they'll just check your Facebook account and decide who you are. So be very, very careful. He's saying that tattoo and dressing is making children that should be generals in the Lord's army and a lot of things mm -hmm. to be disqualified. So even the world is looking for these things. So be careful. He spoke about forgiveness. He said, let's forgive and don't keep diaries. Husband and wife, don't keep diaries. Friendship. He said, anybody is keeping diary for you, run away from them. They are not good for you. The other brother called to say that he just wants to say hello and to say that we are a blessing by God's grace to him. We celebrate you all. As many of you that tune your radios, um, streamline with us, visit our YouTube channel under the banner of love account and listen to our messages. Thank you very much for liking, for loving them, and for sharing them. Thank you very much. Then um, the third caller, as I round up on my segment, talked about dressing again. Warning that please, youth, be careful with your dressing. She said her sister was dressed naked. When she spoke to her, she just carried her back and go away. I want to say this again in closing before I ask Pastor Magdalene to come in. Some of you parents will say, you can't be under my roof and you are doing this. Go away. If you can't do, pack away. Look, devil has prepared accommodation for this youth free of charge. He'll be feeding them, doing everything. All these homosexuals, all these things, they are gaining ground because they rent accommodation. They just say they're feeding them, helping them in the wrong way. So please, no matter how your child is, mm -hmm. no matter how provocative they are, your brothers, mm -hmm. your sisters, patience. please, patience. let's patience. apply love and patience. Mm -hmm. Love and patience. I told you that in my family, we have eight pastors, family of 10. That eight, we all have stories to tell. But my mother was patient with us, just praying, just praying, just praying, just praying, just praying, praying and counseling and encouraging. Today, we all have dynamic ministries all over. So Hallelujah. I want to say, be patient. Mm. Don't drive them out. My neighbors, several times, I've had to go and pack the load of their children that they throw away, and I want them, don't try it. Don't try it. Don't push them out. When you push them out, they will not ready. Don't say, I can't be so walking for them. you. You can't be eating my food and sleeping and eating. So long as that child, so long as he's still in your roof, eating and sleeping, no problem. Tomorrow's for them, brighter days ahead, light is shining on their path. For they must say the light, Jesus is the light. They will rise and shine tomorrow. You continue believing that tomorrow is better. Tomorrow will be better. So long as they are with you, they are under the shadow of the Most High. Psalm 91 says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. They are abiding under the shadow of the Most High. Small by small, small by small, they okay in. Please don't drive them out. Pastor Magdalene Osadaye is in the house. Please, Pastor Magdalene, one minute. Hello, hi. Good afternoon. Afternoon, special afternoon to you. Hello? I can hear you loud and clear. I can hear you Good afternoon, afternoon loud and clear. So God be glory. Okay. We are hearing. Each time I feel like going to church. I don't know what things we will me to not to go. Sometimes I'll be thinking, okay, let me go or I should not go. Before you notice, I will not, I will not have that more comfortable to go to church again. I will just sit down at home. And I don't like it. 
Okay. It's a doing thing. We'll answer you now. Pastor Magdalena, said I please answer that question. Uh, it is written in the book of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. First of all, there shall be, there should be willingness. Willingness and obedience to the word of God. The Bible tells us that we should not forsake the assemblies of the children of God as manner of some people. So don't don't be part of those people that have the manner of, a, of forsaking the house of God, the assemblies of ourselves together. So don't be part of them. You should be willing and obedient to the word of God because the word of God is powerful. The word of God is effective. So let's see the book of Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse, verse 18. He said, come now. That is me and you. God is saying, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. True, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. In verse 19, he said, if ye be willing, that is you now. If you are willing, let the willingness come. From your mind, if you are willing and obedient to the to that invitation, according to where we just read in verse 18, that say, Come now. If you are willing and obedient, I give you hope. Mm -hmm. The word of God is more than just the one that you are hearing now. Like in the book of uh, John, John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, verse uh, verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the word. The word of God is Jesus Christ Himself, which we are uh, 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 we are we are preaching today. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. In the beginning was God. You can He can make you stronger. He can encourage you. He know all your weaknesses. He know all your all your desire. He know all that you are passing through. He can feel He, he can feel about you. He knows everything about you. So hold on to the Word of God that cannot uh, fail. And the Bible tells us that the Word of God have I hid in my heart so that I will not sin against God. May God of heaven help us and strengthen us to continue in the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you adding you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? It's still the way. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more life. abundantly. You may repeat after me. The method, this, the confession is easy from a sincere, genuine heart. But the methodology is not simple. Christ died on the cross for you and for me. He paid the price. So don't say just like that. Just like that for you, yes, but yeah, someone, someone paid the price. Paid Christ paid, paid in full. Then, I like the song by Charlie Caesar, Christ. paid in full. You may repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive me my sin, forgive have me. mercy on me. Yes. Having said that prayer, you are born again. The devil will be talking to you, talking to you. Mm. Check our video clips mm. on assurance. Mm. We've brought a clip on assurance. Assure yourself that you are a born again child of God by that mm. confession because God loves you. The love of God is what is making you free. Not yourself, not what you did. No, the love of God for you has set you free. Walk in the liberty of that freedom. Get a Bible. Get a daily devotional. Begin to study the word. Power is in the word. Strength is in the word. And reading the word is God talking to you. And as you talk to God, he will talk to you in turn. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his countenance of favor and mercy never leave us all. Father, we pray for the Jordan family as a point of contact for your children all over the world. Bless, keep, and prosper all in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for our nation, Nigeria. It is well with us. Thank you very much for tuning with us. Visit our YouTube channel. The messages are there for you. On Facebook, check the Banner of Love account. Messages are loaded there for you. God bless you. Thank you.